Like all construction projects, house extensions have become increasingly expensive over the last few years. Since COVID, inflation in the UK building industry has been running rampant. It's become so bad that I've given up advising clients on what their projects are likely to cost. While most of my projects are high-end and have bigger than average budgets, that does not mean my clients have infinite money. They have to draw a line somewhere. So how do you save money on a house extension in the UK? I've split this video into two parts. The first looks at big strategic decisions such as the size and layout of an extension. The second part of the video looks at materials and construction methods. In case you're new to the channel, my name is Neil and I've been a self-employed architect in the UK since 2009. I specialize in altering and extending private homes. This is my home office and I regularly make videos about the reality of my work. If you would like to see more, hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every week. Keep in mind that design is always about compromise, whether it's clothes, cars, electronics or buildings. We always face a choice between time, cost and quality. If you want to build a house extension for the lowest possible price, then you have to accept a compromise in time and quality. It's like a law of mathematics. Yeah, it uh, says it right here. You may think the suggestions in this video are extreme, but they should help you understand how to go about designing the maximum house extension for the minimum budget. Every project is different and specific planning guidelines or building regulations will need to be taken into account for your project. As always, please take advice from a local architect before going ahead. First off, the easiest way to build a house extension is not to do any alteration to the existing house. If you want the cheapest possible extension, just stick a box on the side of your home and not so much as a coat of paint inside the existing building. Where extensions go wrong financially is when they start messing about with the layout of the existing building. I should say that this is not something I would advise my clients to do. Most of the properties I deal with involve significant internal alterations as well as house extensions. Maybe the property is old, maybe it needs substantial refurbishment, maybe the kitchens and bathrooms and bedrooms are in the wrong place. And so we have to change the layout of the building. But if we're looking at this from a purely financial point of view, the cheapest way to build a house extension is to just stick a box on the side of the house and not worry about the existing building. The downside of this is that the house and the extension will operate like two different structures. They won't flow. No flow. If you want a home that flows properly, you have to integrate the extension into the layout of the house. There's no other way of doing it, but it comes with a financial penalty. If your budget is limited, it will mean you get a smaller extension because a huge chunk of your budget is being spent inside the existing building. The second way to avoid spending more than necessary on a house extension is to keep it one story. I've lost count of the number of people who phone me up saying they must have a two-story extension. Most of the time, they're just thinking in a linear way. Their existing house is two stories with bedrooms on the upper floor and living space on the ground floor. If they want more bedrooms, it follows that they have to extend on the upper floor, right? Wrong. Wrong. This creates significant problems, particularly when you have to integrate the new bedroom in the upper floor of the house. It doesn't always work out smoothly. Maybe the stairs is in the wrong place and a new corridor must be built on the top floor. That corridor will steal space from existing bedrooms. Maybe the amount of new space required on the upper floor doesn't match the new space on the ground floor and the new structure will be awkward to build. Maybe altering the existing roof and external walls in order to integrate the new upper floor of the extension will be prohibitively expensive. And all of this, before we consider the implications for a planning application, a larger structure can overlook and overshadow your neighbors, usually a major problem for the planners. No, 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 no. For those reasons, I almost always advise people against building two stories. A better way of doing things and I know this advice contradicts the first point I made, is to rearrange how the house and the extension work as one unit, rather than two separate things. Any well-designed home must have a clear split between public and private spaces. Public spaces, like your kitchen or living room, is where you feel comfortable entertaining guests. Private spaces are the bedrooms, bathrooms, or your home office. So if you have an existing two-story house and you need more bedrooms, it often makes sense to create a larger kitchen living dining space on the ground floor by incorporating part of the existing house into the extension, like I did on this project. 
You can then create a new main entrance to your home, which walks straight into this new space. The advantage of this approach is that existing rooms on the ground floor, which were used for dining or living spaces, can now become additional bedrooms, and you don't need to build the two storeys. In effect, the existing house becomes a dormitory, and the new extension becomes the public or entertaining space. Looking at it like this is the most effective way to extend a house, but it is not the cheapest. Keep in mind that if you decide to build a kitchen or a bathroom in a room which isn't already a kitchen or a bathroom, it will cost more, because forming new drainage can be expensive. Another design decision that can keep the cost down is to use a flat roof rather than a more conventional pitched roof. There are two reasons for this. First, there is less material in a flat roof than a pitched roof covering the same area, so it costs less to build. Second, a pitched roof usually has to be integrated with the existing roof of a building, and this takes time. A flat roof is easier to connect to the existing building without having to take apart the existing roof to do it. Finally, if you want to design a house extension for a minimum budget, keep the number of corners and junctions to a minimum. A square or rectangular layout is going to be cheaper to build than a complex layout. And absolutely no curves or weird angles, they cost a fortune to build. Now that we've discussed the big strategic decisions that can either cost or save you money, let's talk about the material choices that affect the budget. No matter where you are in the world, there will be a typical or standard method of construction that local builders prefer to use. In Scotland, where I live, it's timber frame construction. The point is, if you choose to vary from the preferred method of construction, it will either cost far more than normal, or you won't be able to find a contractor willing to build your project. Take advice from an experienced local architect on this one. In the UK, most homes are built with masonry on the outer walls, that is brick, block or stone. Sometimes these have render or plaster over them, but the basic construction is the same. While this is traditional, it is time intensive and cheaper alternatives are available. The most cost effective external wall material is cladding, whether that is timber cladding, metal cladding like zinc or preformed cladding panels. An external wall with cladding will be thinner than a wall with masonry, so the foundation underneath that wall can also be thinner, saving more money. I'm not going to get into issues of which cladding material is best, or whether any cladding is acceptable to planners or local building regulations. As always, take advice from a local architect. Another way to save money is to reduce the amount of glazing in your extension. Per square metre, windows usually cost more than the wall they are built into. Keep in mind that in the UK, the building regulations set a minimum amount of natural light for habitable rooms, so you can't eliminate windows entirely from bedrooms or living areas. I should also point out that the cheapest material for windows is UPVC. Timber and aluminium always cost more. Next up is the ground floor construction method. These usually come in two flavours, solid concrete floors and suspended timber floors. A solid floor requires a lot of digging and concrete, as well as more expensive, dense insulation. A suspended timber floor has a void underneath and the insulation can be mineral wool, which costs less. The downside of a suspended timber floor is that it has to be raised two to three hundred millimetres above the external ground level, because the void underneath must be ventilated. This will work if the existing ground floor of your home is raised above the external ground. Not everyone is happy with suspended floors. Some people notice that they move when walked on, while solid concrete ones don't. It's also much easier to fit underfloor heating into a solid concrete floor. Now, if you really want to push cost efficiency to its extreme conclusion, take a drive to your nearest out-of-town retail park or industrial estate. Those big boxes are the cheapest way to enclose space. They use steel frame and profiled metal cladding on the walls and on the roof. I'm not saying your extension should resemble a shrunk down IKEA, but if you want the most space for the least money, a steel frame with profiled metal cladding is the way to do it. While it would raise all sorts of questions from a planning permission and building regulation standpoint, I suspect it is feasible. The question is, would you want to? I should also point out that prefabricated buildings or kit homes are not the answer. They might work if you are a property developer building dozens of houses in a field, but it's not going to save you any money if you're just extending your home. So there you have it, a quick guide on how to save money when designing a house extension in the UK. If you are interested in altering or extending your home, I offer consultations on the reallifearchitect.co.uk website. I'll put a link in the description below.